Vicky here from Ramsline and with uh, Jess from Tigers of Pang Tang. How are you today? Not very well, thank you. A bit hot. But, uh... Yeah, it's very hot. It's like 30 degrees and I think we can all agree our hair is going <laughs> all, over, all over the place. <laughs> have you been down to the beach yet? Yeah, yeah, so I have. Uh, it's great. I mean, fabulous setup for a festival, really. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I say we were in a hotel uh, about half an hour's walk and you have to walk along the river. Yeah. I was saying the guys, come on, let's go to the office. It was a bit, it's the best walk to the office we've ever had. But of course, you've got the beach there and all the fun and games. And, uh, yeah. It's probably one of the probably one of the best festivals. Probably the best festival, I guess. I would go. When I think I about that. it, because festivals are fest, you know, they're in a field and not yeah. well organised and nice. But this has got all this extra stuff. Mm. I mean, the backdrop of the mountains and everything, you know. Yeah. Uh, just the guys were saying, oh, we wouldn't, we, you wouldn't come to Slovenia. You wouldn't think, yeah, I know what, we really need a holiday in Slovenia, but. Yeah. By doing these things, you get to see them, you know. Yeah, it's because we arrived at night, and then uh, when we woke up in the morning and saw the scenery, it was just you know breathtaking. It's brilliant. It's it's definitely a brilliant festival for people to come to from the UK because we like the heat, and a lot of UK festivals seem to <laughs> have rain and mud these days. So. <laughs> well, as I said, the guys, I'm not used to this heat. You know, it's usually snowing in Newcastle about this time of the year. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So I wanted to ask you, it's a, it's a fairly broad question, but I wanted to hear what your response might be. Um, so obviously you've been in the music industry a long time and I wanted to know um, what were the main uh, things that you've seen change since maybe since the sort of 80s up until now? Well, just the whole everything really. I mean, it, I try to explain to people when, when we started what it was like, it was so different. I mean, people have got to understand social media didn't exist. You know, nobody had computers, didn't exist. There was nothing. Yeah. You know, I remember playing a gig once and we had this new thing. Oh, it's a computer. What is it? Oh, it's, a, it's like a tennis game and a little ball went back and forwards. And you had like a bat, you could go on and one. We used to play it backstage. We used to yeah. think we're like on the cutting edge of technology <laughs> here. You know, we're flat. You know, yeah. This is it. Nobody's got one of these. <laughs> and uh, so that was it. But I mean, just the power of the. I mean, media was the thing, that's what you found out. You had yeah. to buy, there was a Sounds magazine it was called, which I'm sure metalheads or whatever they heard of, but when they Kerrang and Frank came along later. Mm. It was like the enemy Sounds, Sounds was it. Yeah. In the, in the Friday rock show, Tommy Vance on Radio 1, that was it. Yeah. What, that was it. And that's the only way you sourced information on bands, and there was only a few of us anyway in the early days, uh, New Wave bands anyway. And uh, we went on tour, and uh, as I say, we didn't even understand the power of the press. Yeah. And I remember going on stage in this big roar, and I remember looking behind me to see it come on, and realise it was for us. Yeah. And at the end of the gig, we took the gear off the stage and went and put it by the, uh, by, the, by the exits, and I sat on it to make sure nobody stole anything, like you would do with a, a, a little work in men's clubs we used yeah. to play, you know. Uh, and then people asked for autographs, so I don't know. But it was because people had read the sounds, heard us on the Friday Rock Show, and uh, but now every we didn't know what the contract was. We didn't know we did anything. We didn't care. We were interested in getting signed up. What was signed up? Uh, yeah. Who knows? Nobody wanted to be a pop star, a rock star, because nobody knew what a rock star was necessarily. Boy, you led Zeppelins and obvious things that did untouchable things up there. Yeah. But now, because of technology and, and where the world's gone. Everybody knows everything about everything. There yeah. are zillions of bands. I mean, zillions of little things. You know. And tons of press at the same time, and lots of pockets of niche people. And oh yeah, I mean, it's gone like this. Yeah. To literally that. Yeah. You know, and you uh, don't have to see anything you don't want to see, basically. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. I mean, uh, it's to, yeah, all these Facebooks and Instagrams and God knows what. Mm. I, I don't know how people have got the time to do these things. I, I've got yeah. time in my life. You know, I got, think um, there's a certain element of it where people grow up just used to doing it as part of their day to day. <laughs> yeah, well, I got a 12 year old son and he's like this, you know. Yeah. I've been on his Xbox trying to play, you know, and like I'm in a car or whatever, I'm stuck up against a wall revving, <laughs> and he's doing like 15 circuits, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so. technology is. Well, it's, it's, it's what you're used to, that's right. You know. Yeah, and how do you think that's 
really affected the music industry, just the fact that there's more bands. Yeah, it's, it's just, uh, it's not all the be all and end all now to get a major, like, a major deal and have this great distribution and that, there was, a, there was a little system you could click into and that's yeah. how it works, you know, and some bands as it got bigger wouldn't even do press, they would do, you know, two or three specialist mags in each territory. Yeah. Where now, um, it's, it's, it's bands are nearly their own record business. Yeah. It's a cottage industry. You can set up, uh, you can make an album at home. Uh, you, you can release it, have a release date. You can just, you know, and you can, and you can sell, you can sell it as well. You know, there's so many places to sell it. Yeah. You know, on um, again on social media and wherever. So. It's changed in the fact that it's more accessible for everybody. Yeah. Do you agree with the people that say, oh, the music industry is dying out? Um, Aspects of it have died out, yeah. yeah. I mean, retail is pretty much gone. Yeah. Um, I mean, I run a record company as well as being in a band. And, yeah. Uh, so I used to own Neat Records, and now I've got a label called Metal Nation Records. And I still, uh, we still do Blitzkrieg, and, Tigers albums actually and, and things uh, and um, I stopped all my distribution worldwide because yeah. there's no point because yeah. you can't get it into any uh, you can't get it in, in, into the shops because they don't exist it's just focus on uh, digital downloads now well we oh no no we, we do still make physical yeah because people who uh, I do a lot of new British heavy metal and, and a lot of those people still want a physical CD. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we do all the Spotify's and all that yeah. thing and uh, iTunes and, mm. you know, you, as you do. It, they're just kind of add-ons now and people like to source music in different ways, but yeah. a lot of people still like the CD. And, yeah. But I, I've noticed sales of CDs have gone. Mm. I mean, uh, where before I might have sold 3,000, 7,000. You're kind of lucky to shift a thousand now. Yeah. You know. I'm always a fan of a CD though. I don't like the digital side of it, but I accept that that is the way it is now. So. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I can live with it. Uh, I mean, I'm, you know, I, I, uh, in my office, I have Spotify on all day. Yeah. I don't even CDs now. I go, what are these? It's funny. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just been so long since I put one in a machine. Yeah. I just turn Spotify on. You find what you want to watch. It, listen to and just you know bang on Zeppelin or something and just leave it on all day and then just you know whatever you want to listen to yeah. um, so uh, you know I, I mean I think it's fabulous I think it's great because like I say my kids if they ever they know everything about every band ever yeah because I just say I remember having a Beatles album um, open and I was looking it was the best of my it was only six I know that one, Daddy. What? I know that. <laughs> he knew them all. I said, You don't know these? He says, Yeah, I do. And he sang them all. Oh, wow. All of them. He's like six or seven. Smoke on, Smoke on the Water was his most favourite song when he was three. You know, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> but it, he sees it, he saw it all on, on the internet. Yeah. Um, on shows, like, you know, I didn't reduce them to like the young ones or something. You go back and watch all the shows, but he hears all the music, sees all the bands. Now, yeah. You know, not, not long ago, 10 years ago, some, everybody thought Heavy Metal started with Metallica, especially in America. Mm. But now they've got access to the history of music and at their fingertips. So yeah. I think it's absolutely fabulous. Bad for the artists in a sense, because you get no money anymore. You don't yeah. get paid. And I guess that's the side of it where people are saying it's kind of dying off a bit. But it's well, that's just collapsed. I mean, I know vinyl's ways. come back. I do yeah. all my yeah. stuff on vinyl now. Recently, I've noticed that in the last few years, actually, vinyl making a bit of a comeback it's quite a big deal More, some people only do vinyl now oh wow yeah uh, and, and when I do a CD I can't be bothered with vinyl it's such a hassle but um, I I uh, pick a company to then release the vinyl version uh, but I'm doing but I'm doing licensing now this has changed as well where I license an album Instead of having to get all the uh, pictures, photographs, images, lyrics together, songs onto a, onto a format that they can use to master or whatever they're going to do, I can now just digitally send it on on uh, Dropbox. Yeah, everything. I love Dropbox. It's yeah, easy. You know, it's just bang, <laughs> gone, and that's it. Just yeah. it's all on your computer. So you just bang, gone. 
Yeah. We are doing licenses in China, uh, South America. I've never met the guys, I've never spoken to them, I've never sent them any letter, any, nothing. Yeah. The money comes digitally into PayPal or whatever it might be, or in the back. I mean, everything is just digital. It, it, yeah. it is wonderful. Uh, it's very much more, it makes life a lot easier to be able to do things in a record label without colossal staff and, and Yeah, things. and you can just have a computer and off you go. <laughs> Absolutely, you can be a record company, you know, on the bus, uh, you know, if, <laughs> if, if you've got a computer or you see a phone even, you know. Yeah, that's but true. It, it means the bands can get so much more exposure so much more quickly, yeah. it's instant. They can make videos and where before you had to find somewhere to play them and then nine times with ten they wouldn't. Yeah. But now you can place them at places. If, if you've got a you know a guy who knows what he's doing, you can get your video in so many different sources and get a huge amount of hits on audio and visual, uh, which obviously then goes to hopefully get the download, hopefully get a record sale or whatever if you're you know a band or a label. Mm. Uh, so the record company's pretty much changed out of all. Yeah. Out of all recognition in that sense. Yeah. It's a bit sad, uh, you know, because physical sales are kind of gone, and I, I do feel for the bands, you know, that they're not getting that money. And it may, to me, it makes music feel like it's what we're doing is worthless. That's what it feels like. Yeah, people feel like they should just be able to grab entertainment free. for free. Yeah. Yeah, time. but it's kind of like well. As I say, when I find people who are, who are bootlegging or, or these idiots that put albums up and to download, and I mean like a month before release or something, it, I don't know if they understand, but they're destroying the industry and yeah. destroying the band. Mm. They say that because nine times out of ten they go, "Oh, we're a fan of the band, and we want to put it up." Well, if you're a fan of the band, mate, you're just about putting them on their knees because without any money, they can't make the next album. If they don't get record sales, they don't get the next album, and they don't exist. So if yeah. you're a fan of the band, that band won't exist. So mm. Can you not understand that? But it, they don't. They yeah. Don't. But also, yeah. that is the good thing about um, live shows and festivals like today, well, where that's right now, you know yeah. bands can sell merch. And um, I think you, there's not any time ever where anyone will be able to replace going to watch a band live. So that's something that people well, always it's good. buy. It's good for the small band, but I mean, fantastic for the big bands. You know, yeah. They do, you know, so many. Uh, so much amount of merch, you know, these sell hundreds of thousands or millions of pounds worth of merch from your Metallicas of the world and whatever, but you know, some of the little bands sell a few shirts and stuff, but you know, yeah. still not enough to go and make an album probably, but but yeah, we I've noticed you can shift a good bit of merch. I mean that is the that is the side which has really come up. But again then it's it's now getting gigs in the festival, yeah. it's getting on. <laughs> I mean, there's so many now. You, 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 I'm amazed at how many. Even in England, there really are. Yeah. You know, even in England, you see things. Like, what the hell is this? Little ones pop up all over yeah, the place. But the, yeah, but, but people, you know, there's ten thousand people turn up. You know. Yeah. But even the bigger ones that like I've been reading about, Ramblin' Man, this weekend. Yeah, yeah. I kind of knew about it, but not really. And I was like, oh. Yeah, it looked quite uh, good lineup that actually. Yeah.